Welcome to the second video in a series of two on reverse osmosis system. This one will investigate the heart of and, and how to make a reverse osmosis system for your whole house. Now the heart of it was a three-stage reverse osmosis system. This one is an under-the-counter unit, residential unit, and it worked up until the point where some of the internal uh, plastic manifold pieces which the little cartridges are attached decided to have some plastic fatigue and uh, I sprang a leak and it had a little water damage in the house and so I replaced this unit. Now at its heart are the three stages that are common to RO systems. And you see stage one there is at your left which is a uh, a sediment chlorine pre-filter cartridge and what that basically consists of is some type of filter media which takes out the big stuff and also a carbon media which takes out the chlorine because chlorine and the media which the membranes are made out of do not mix. The center cartridge is the RO membrane itself and the last cartridge is just basically a carbon filter and it's used to buffer the uh, RO'd water. Now this unit did a pretty good job and it produced all the water the household needed for a number of years. But uh, plastic does fatigue and it does get old and when placed under pressure uh, sometimes dimension change and I uh, had a little, uh, little water damage. Now uh, to this unit to extend the life of the sediment chlorine pre-filter on this I did add a whole house filter to uh, act as a pre-stage and to add additional buffering and to work in I added a second big uh, carbon filter to add additional buffering. And when I repaired the unit rather than putting another three stage unit I just simply replaced it with an RO membrane and that's what we'll see in just a moment. This is the second of a two-part series on reverse osmosis for a whole house system. This is how you can set up reverse osmosis for a drinking water system in a whole house. You really need to see part one, which is the theory of reverse osmosis, to identify the system components because it's a pretty simple system, a three-stage reverse osmosis, and has been modified to improve performance so they can actually handle the whole house or much bigger demand than a three-stage system would normally do. Now this one is not very attractive because instead of being on a nice neat uh, compact board or manifold system it's spread out with discrete components built with common average everyday components for longer life and easier access to build things back up and put it together with. This is not a real fancy, hard to get a hold of type thing. This was built out of common pieces. Inbuilt with the intention of being able to be maintained over a long period of time. Now, you need to watch that first one, else this one, the individualized components won't mean much to you. Because all I'm going to do on this one is show you them being used in real life. This system, when adapted to the whole house, does have one interesting modification that you must have that I'll get to it when we get to it. But let's first, let's just go through the basic identification of components as they sit on the wall. This first can is the pre-filter. It takes out the big particulates. It's designed to take out the big stuff so that we don't clog our membrane full of sand, sediment, the big stuff because the membrane is going to produce initially some fixed amount of water and as we push water through it it's going to slowly plug up just like a, a screen would it's going to get clogged up with with uh, material and slowly lose its performance and get where it takes longer and longer to generate the water so what the pre-filter does is take out the big stuff as much as it can pre-filtering. Sometimes you see a four-stage 
you'll see two pre-filters and that's really what they're doing they're using it so I'm using a whole house a larger pre-filter than you would normally find on just a single small under the counter drinking water system now after a pre-filter you know we always have to have a post filter all this is is a carbon buffer it's nothing more than a carbon buffer and if you'll look see we've got it plumbed in to the tank and into the house it goes in under that yellow a little CPVC, my whole house is plumbed in CPVC due to the presence of several bacteria, which are common in my aquifer, which can be quite corrosive to copper and other materials. So uh, we do treat it with chlorine, but it's not a bad idea to use materials that are not going to degrade under uh, biologic influences. Now, they won't hurt me, they won't hurt my family, but they will eat up my pipes. So doing everything in non-corrosive plastic will help. Now in the case of reverse osmosis, we've taken all the minerals out and the water can be highly aggressive. So that's another reason to use all plastic parts. Now we come out around here and you see we come down to our tank. And we've identified the tank as being much, much larger than a standard drinking water system that you'd find like in you know, under the house system. Right here we have a small tank which is about the size you'd find for a under the sink drinking water system only and we use it in conjunction with that small high pressure pump that we use to create that high pressure zone. Now it may not be the most attractive setup in the world, but it is highly functioning. And we have lots of valves placed throughout the system. It's all pressure rated. It's all National Sanitation Foundation rated, all of my components. They're just mounted, house mounted. I'm not planning on taking this out and taking it anywhere. Because the water is not going to move with me, so anybody who buys my house, if I were to move or sell it, would have the same problem I would have, which is excess uh, uh, hardness, excess uh, calcium carbonate. And uh, well, I've already discussed that uh, a softener is not the answer. If you take your soap and suds up your water, if your water will suds, make a little bubble, then it's not too hard for washing and adding salt into your drinking water is not good for your health so you don't want to do that so what do you want to do why don't we just take out what we don't need which is what the RO system does and one of the things you might want to do is label your Now, the house, what makes this whole house is throughout the entire house, we have one of these taps, and not all this tall, but we've got one of these taps at every, every sink in the entire house, and at the ice maker to take out the uh, mineralized water. So this is the demineralized RO water, so we don't get that. You can drink the mineralized water, probably wouldn't hurt you too bad. Uh, it just may give you an increased instance of kidney stones. But uh, the RO water, on most drinking water systems is, is very low delivery pressure. What this does, the permeate pump, not only increases the generation of water, but also increases the delivery pressure. So this is a four cup measuring cup, and we're going to show you how, just how long it takes to fill it up. So that's one U.S. quart. So that, that's not too bad. 